Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the online series 9 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Today we're trying out a really fun team built by Willy and Bars. We featured one of their teams very, very recently, and uh, they've built a really cool team featuring Swagger, Citrus Prankster Thunderous, an old friend of ours, as well as Assault Vest's own Tempo Avalog. Avalog's a really interesting Pokemon, right? It's super slow, but it actually has really incredible coverage, and the self-swagger strategy is reminiscent of VGC 2012, 2013. Back in those days, you'd see Thunderous or Cresselia swagger into a Lumberry user such as uh, Metagross, for example, and get it activated. So, kind of a similar strat here. Uh, the Thunderous set is, you know, fully defensive, but you've got Thunderbolt just for some chip, chip damage. And while typically when people see Avalog, they expect, like, you need to use Trick Room to activate it, the reality is that it's just so bulky especially with the Salt Vest and because it gets access to Max Quake and Steel Spike, uh, it can just boost its defenses really, really quickly. Uh, and so as a result, yeah, this Avalog is super, super entertaining. There's a lot of cool components to it, and it doesn't even need Trick Room to thrive. To round out the team, you've got Classic, Focus Sash, Urshifu, Life Orb, Cinderace, which in my opinion is just kind of underrated at the moment. Like, Cinderace was so dominant in the earlier days of 2020, throughout 2020, right? Um, but now it, it feels like it's been a little bit forgotten about, and I think it's still really, really strong. Uh, and so, you know, it's just a solid max option, outspeeds so many Pokemon in the format, and when you consider the number of Steel-type Pokemon that people are using right now, really solid option. Finally, to round out the team, you've got Iron Defense, Body Press, Bronzong. We actually just used Bronzong uh, on Ryota's team as well, so fun to feature another team with it. But I think one reason, you know, players have been trending towards Bronzong is because everyone's using Metagross right now, and Metagross is completely walled by Bronzong, basically. You can't hit it at all, so if you get your opponent to max their Metagross early, uh, Bronzong has really good late game against it, right? And as you can see, this team is well composed because Avalog doesn't really love going into uh, against Steel types, so that's where Cinderace comes in handy uh, against Metagross, right? Urshifu can Wicked Blow into it, Bronzai can completely wall it, all of those add up together. And then finally, Classic, Calm Mind, Wiki, Berry, Tapu Fini. So thank you to Bars and Willy for the team. Check them out, linked in the description below, as well as a rental and a paste courtesy of them. And thank you to you all, as always, for watching Road to Rank. If you enjoyed, please share your support by leaving a like. I'd really appreciate it. And question of the day, I want to know what your favorite ability is inspired by us using some interesting abilities like Ohm Tempo, Avalug, and Prankster Thunderous. Uh, personally, I mean, in VGC, like Shadow Tag, especially God the Tail, like God Tail is one of my all-time favorite Pokemon, so uh, that's probably my answer, but, you know, Prankster, Whimsicott, uh, Whimsicott in general is also just a really fun Pokemon, uh, and so those are some answers that jump to mind for me, personally. So, let's get started. Okay, first game of the day, and it's a pretty hard Trick Room team here. What's Avalok's speed again? 48, it's not min speed. Uh, really interesting team. You have Liapar, Hatterene, uh, and Galarian Slowbro, so you can just go Max Guard Trick Room. So Bronzong can reverse the Trick Room here, which is really interesting. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm kind of down for Avalug. What if I just go Thunderous Avalug? Because I could just go Swagger, Max. I'm not completely opposed to that. <laughs> I feel like this could be decent. So Thunderous, Avalog, Bronzong. Uh, Urshifu's consistent just because it's sashed. Cinderace is actually really good offensively here, but they can guarantee Trick Room, so I don't really feel super confident in that. So like, I, I'm thinking we just go Thunderous. Okay, these three for sure. Feeny's not bad into Torkoal. That's my main reason in bringing it, but I, I feel like Urshifu... Well, actually, I'm pretty weak to Torkoal if I don't bring Feeny, right? Because I don't have a single fire resist. So I actually feel like I have to go with Tapu Feeny here. So let's see. Uh, either way, I think the goal here is to just get Avalog boosted ASAP, right? We don't even need to max it turn one if I see, like, um, the Hatterene and the Liopard. In fact, what we want to do is intentionally not pick up a KO, I think. Yeah, so it is Hapless Liopard. I, I guess I could have just gone Bronzong as well. That could have been pretty interesting. Um, uh, one thing to watch out for, I guess. Ah, the question is whether or not you're Focus Sashed on the, um, Liopard. Also, I just thought of a really sick play we can do. It's a little bit risky. Um, just double checking the speed. 48, so we go down to 24. Oh, I don't remember Torkoal's off the top of my head, but what I was thinking is we can self Thunder Wave in this game as well. Um, I don't want to KO Liopard in this position, I think. Well, if I go, like what I could do is Swagger. Oh, we don't have Thunder Wave, never mind. Uh, so that doesn't work. Never mind. So yeah, I definitely don't want to knock out Liopard right now. I want them to commit their Dynamax, ideally. So I'm down to just Rock Slide and Swagger out of luck. Yeah. Because I don't think I'm going to be taking damage. I mean, unless they just foul play, but it should be Max Guard Trick Room. Uh, copycat. 
So then that's good, right? Because you've already committed one turn of your Dynamax. Uh, Thunderous is actually very valuable for us with Eerie Impulse in this as well. I guess this is like a little bit greedy in case they just go like Fake Tears, Max Flare, turn one. That actually be really bad. <laughs> so let's see. I, I maybe should have considered that. Oh gosh. That is not good news for us. Ah. Uh, I mean, I guess I should have maxed here to play it a little bit safer. Um, this was really risky on their end, though, because if I actually just attacked Hatterene turn one, like, they were in a lot of trouble. It's probably going to be a max flare onto us, unfortunately. I assume that KOs with the fake tears? Yeah. Okay. Ugh, oh, that's frustrating. We could have just outright won the game if I targeted Hatterene turn one, so good read on my opponent's end. Maybe it was worth going for. Although if they've max, if I max, no, then they could just fake tears. Although then, yeah, I think I should have died a max there. Um, it's honestly still not even that bad, but I could have gotten a lot more mileage out of Avalog this game. That's the main thing. It's like pretty easy to bring out Feeny right now. Um, and we have Eerie Impulse, right? So what I can do is just Calm Mind with Feeny. Uh, they're probably just going to go... Well, I guess they could theoretically just go fake tears again right now. Huh. Like, I'm leaning towards Calm Mind and T-Bolt here. Because I would think now they want to set up Trick Room, so they go Max Guard Copycat. Uh, Avalon could have absolutely swept this game, so I'm a little bit disappointed I didn't get maximum usage out of it. Um, yeah, wow, they don't go for the... Okay. Yes, they are going to target Feeny here. We'll KO Liopard. I don't know if Hat KOs us. I mean, we'll be at minus one special defense. I think we'd survive, but... G-Max Smite scary, although you can't confuse the Feeny, I guess, which is the upside. So maybe a better play turn one was to, like, Eerie Impulse the Hatterene. Max the Avalok, because Avalok's just so good in this matchup. Like, it's inexcusable to, like, not get as much mileage as possible with it. Okay, Feeny survives, but not with very much. Either way, like, even if we win this game, it is not a great game for uh, from our end. Because, like, I could have gotten a lot more mileage out of Avalog. Uh, Phoenix surviving there is pretty clutch. I, I actually took it worse than I thought it would. Um, pretty easy for me to max guard this last turn. Now I ha oh, I guess I can't eerie impulse right now, which is part of the problem, but that's fine. They bring out Glastrier, which isn't amazing to see. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to go max guard here and then switch Thunderous out into Bronzong. I, I would think my opponent's last one is going to be Torkoal, right? So then what I can do is just Starfall into the Hatterene Iron Defense with Bronzong. Yeah, it was just really smarter than to not go for Max Guard Trick Room turn one. Uh, like, we could have just insta one if I went Swagger Steel Spike, because I don't know if my opponent was even expecting Steel Spike in that position. Um, but, you know, my opponent recognizes, hey, Avalok is a pretty slow Pokemon, so I kind of want to KO it rather than just, you know, hard set up Trick Room, which I think is very smart on their end. I also could have protected Feeny last turn, which would have been a very good turn for us. Um, I still feel okay about this unless my opponent reads into the Thunderous switch out. Okay, the Icicle Spear, that's fine. See how many hits they get. One, two, just two, okay. And they smite, okay, good. Yeah, so we're still in this. Like, it's it's not even that bad, honestly. Um, but, like I said, this could have been Avalok Domination, um, but I just got out red turn one. I don't mind that too much, but I think, like, since Avalok's so good in this matchup, I had a safer play to make. Now, this Hatterene's not going to have Protect, it's because it has Flare to Revealed Smite and Psychic, and obviously you have Trick Room. So, it's a free Starfall into it. I guess my only fear is if this Starfall doesn't actually KO. Oh, that would actually be a pretty big problem. Uh, do we outspeed Hatterene? Yeah, we do. Okay, for that reason, then, I'm just nervous about activating a Policy on Glastrier, though. But I just don't know if plus one Starfall KOs Hatterene right now. And if Trick Room goes up, I think we definitely lose. So I'm going to double up on a Hatterene here. I also don't know if a plus two high horsepower KOs Tapu Fini from the range that we're at. Like, that's the other reason why maybe this is fine. Ideally, Glastria, like, protects here. But they don't. Um, okay. Get Starfall off. Oh, that wasn't enough to KO Hatterene. Okay, then I should have just gone for Iron Defense, but... I just don't think I could have afforded Trick Room to actually go up here. 
It's probably going to be policy glass year, and that's fine if you don't one-shot the Tapu Fini with high horsepower. If you do, things get a little bit scarier. Ooh, that's really good damage, though. Wow, okay, that's a 2 a KO. Ooh, that's because we got a crit, okay. But they're not weakness policy. Okay, nice. So Fini should still be able to clutch this one off for us, I think. Um, but well, once again, like, I'm a little bit disappointed in myself just because Avalog, like, could have completely smashed this game. But, hey, it still, had, it still made an appearance, you know, had a good turn one and forced the pressure onto it immediately. But uh, this feels like a game in which Avalog could have just solo carried by itself, honestly. Okay, so Torkoal's my opponent's last one. We should always Geyser here. I'm pretty sure that's going to be AV Glastrier. So I think I, here I'm down to just Geyser into Glastrier and Body Press it. Yeah, because as soon as we change the weather, uh, we should win the game with Thunderous uh, in the back, right? Because Thunderous plus Bronzong double up should KO the Glastrier. You know, we were lucky to get the crit, but uh, I think uh, even if we didn't get the crit, the second body press plus the geyser damage would be enough to KO. I, actually, maybe not. Um, but the main thing here is that they never got Trick Room up, right? And when you're running a hard Trick Room team, like, yes, my opponent had a pretty strong early game. Yeah, actually, Glastrier would survive two body presses if I didn't crit, I think, and the geyser. Um, but then I probably just would have targeted differently, like, you know, got, uh, doubled up on Torkoal instead. Uh, now Body Press should finish things off. And I don't even think you can KO Fini from this range, but even if you do, Torkoal's not beating uh, Thunderous at this point. So this is a good example of how you can recover from a somewhat subpar early game. Uh, they're going to go Eruption, but yeah, Fini doesn't take much. I mean, Fini surviving with 3 HP was really clutch, right? Because if we didn't survive, this game was over, uh, most likely. Or not most likely, I don't think we can come back from that. Uh, so honestly, my opponent played really well in this early game. Like, I think if they just went for, like, Max Guard Trick Room turn one, we would be in amazing shape, because then I would have gotten a plus two, uh, Avalog, and then the next turn I could just go Eerie Impulse onto the Hatterene, max the Avalog, and then just Steel Spike into Hatterene. Like, that just feels like game winning, basically. Um, so my opponent, like, kept themselves in this match really, really nicely. Um, there's no reason to risk a Muddy Water miss here, especially because we have Thunderous in the back, so might as well just go for consistent damage. Um, because Thunderous is Thunderbolt, Torkoal Special Defense is really bad, it just can't really do very much damage to either of our Pokemon right now, so, yeah. In, in late game scenarios, like, you should always just ask yourself, like, what can go wrong, and typically the answer is going to be, like, missing attacks. I don't even know if this KO's top with Fini, honestly. 20 down to 6, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> Fini was just so good here as well. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that's, that's the main thing, right? When you're using a hard Trick Room team, you typically have to dedicate yourself to getting Trick Room up, because otherwise you're going to get outsped. So, yeah, in the early game, uh, you know, my opponent was able to defeat the Avalug, but in the end, Fini surviving and then getting this late game max was really, really good for us. Uh, it was fortunate that it wasn't weakness policy on the Glastrier. That could have also changed things drastically. Um, so I'm curious if there is a policy on my opponent's team. Also curious on the item on Torkoal. Uh, maybe Charcoal? Because it's not a berry, it's not specs, and those are normally, like, what I would expect on Torkoals these days. So, yeah. Uh, I have to say, like, not the best debut for Avalog, but uh, I, I, I can't complain. Like, I, I think my opponent just played really well in the first two turns of the game, so kudos to them, honestly. Uh, but that was a pretty fun one, so let's look for our next match here. All right, second game of the day. I want better Avalog action. There's a Porygon Z here, though. Will that allow me to dominate with Avalog? Well, we do have the AV. It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, opponent is Grim PZ is scary, but I have Eerie Impulse on Thunderous. I'm down to just go Thunderous Avalog again. Why not? Feeny is pretty good in the late game, and it sets up terrain so you can't spore. Bronzong is really interesting solely as a switch in into Porygon Z's max strikes. Is that enough reason to bring it though? Because body press is pretty insignificant in this game. It's probably not. I think I'd rather go Urshifu. Actually, like regular Cinderace is really interesting here as well, but I think it's going to be Urshifu. All right, let's try this out. So if they go like Amoongus PZ, what happens turn one? I have Max Hailstorm. I mean, the, the other thing is you do have to respect Dynamax AV Thunderous, right? Like, that, that's the thing. If you see Thunderous plus Avalog, I don't know how many people would immediately think, oh, it's going to be Swagger. It's, like, somewhat obvious if you, you know, have seen Avalog before, but Avalog's just, like, such a rare Pokemon that I wouldn't be surprised if, like, people just don't know. Like, I know if I uh, went up against this without seeing the team before, I'd be like, what, what is this even supposed to do? So, yeah. Uh, let's see. It's gonna be Grim and PZ. Okay, so this is, like, somewhat scary because they can have... Like, we have Eerie Impulse, though. So... I think that's absolutely huge for us. Um, 
Like turn one, what I want to do is Eerie Impulse Porygon. Especially because you have to respect Max right now. Eerie Impulse Porygon, Max Avalog, and go for Steel Spike onto Grimmsnarl. Okay, I'm down for that. I guess like Grimmsnarl going for Fake out here into Thunderous would be a problem, but I think that's highly unlikely. And Avala can really get the ball rolling in this game. Like, I think um, this Thunderous set is really, really smart. You obviously want Swagger for yourself. Taunt helps against just any potential shenanigans that isn't, like, Prankster Grimmsnarl. Uh, mainly because we can't talk Grimmsnarl, obviously. Um, Thunderbolt, obviously, just for damage. And Eerie Impulse is so smart because you already have the Assault Bells on this Avalog. Avalog's pretty bulky as to begin with, but, like, you throw in... Uh, Eerie Impulse on top of Assault Vest, and it's just amazing, right? So, my one fear here is Grimmsnarl has Fake Out, and they go Fake Out, Max Strike into Thunderous, and just pick up a KO onto it. Uh, because then Porygon Z might get out of control really quickly. But a single Eerie Impulse onto PZ should give me a huge advantage in this game. So, let's see what they go for turn one. The, the other nice thing, I mean, I guess I didn't talk about this option, but if they went Trick, if they have Trick on the Grim, and it's actually Trick like Eject Button. That would be a nightmare. Uh, perfect. No swag. Or sorry, no fake out. Good. I'm sorry I couldn't uh, Dynamax you last game, Avalug. <laughs> I've learned from my mistakes. Maybe I should have Max Quaked instead for a special defense boost. They're just going to strike. Uh, they are going to target Thunderous. Okay. Almost enough for a KO still. I was going to say, that's like a little bit ambitious, because let's say I'm actually Dynamax AV Thunderous. Uh, well, I guess the expectation is that you would KO, right? Yeah, if I don't have any bulk. Well, but if I have AV, then I would survive, right? Hey, either way, I'm pretty happy about that turn one, I think, all things considered. Um, Steel Spike's not going to KO here, right? Yeah, that's fine, though. Because uh, what I can do this next turn is go Swagger, Max Quake. So my only fear is missing the Swagger, but if we hit, that's fantastic for us. I mean, I could draw PZ stats even more, um, but I think with what we have in the back, it's fine. Like, I I want the attack boost on Avalog right now, so yeah, I'm just gonna go Swagger and Quake here. I guess Grim could switch out, so maybe I should have Hailstorm that slot instead, because my opponent. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Wow, I'm actually really surprised by the Max Guard there, but this puts us in a fantastic position. So Avalog's really moving right now and they go taunt oh what a perfect turn okay nice because now we get a special defense boost on avalug as well like i'm at plus one defense plus one special defense plus two attack uh yeah they have reflect up but the other thing about porygon z is in order to beat it you basically don't want it to like pick up three ko's in three turns right and so my opponents already spent two turns of their porygon z at best maybe they'll pick up a single knockout but that is totally fine with me given the state of the game and so, like, that's the thing that's kind of interesting about this Avalog. It, it, you know, it's really slow, but it doesn't matter because it is so, so bulky. Now, Rotom Heat comes out, so uh, I guess the fear here is if it has Will-O-Wisp. Uh, I mean, Nasty Plot's pretty scary as well. I think Thunderous actually should switch out in this position. So, we can go into Feeny. Ma mainly because I want to bring this back out so I can Eerie Impulse uh, Rotom later on. And we have Max Rockfall here, actually. Ooh, because we have Rockfall, I mean... I think we're in great shape, actually. And if we switch into Feeny, you can't Will-O-Wisp us. Okay, wait, this is definitely the play. Yeah, switch into Feeny and just Rockfall into Rotom here 100% of the time. Like, I just don't think Avalo can be uh, KO'd right now. I'm glad I learned from my lessons that last game. I My opponent just really outplayed me the first two turns the last game. Like, really, really well done. Um, but in the end, like, we still won, right? Uh, just, just because their team revolved around Trick Room actually going up. Wow, Max Hailstorm. All right, this is even better for us. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, this has been a pretty much a perfect game for Avalok thus far. So, like, now Rotom didn't protect, right? So it's either going to Nasty Plot or Will-O-Wisp, I think. I mean, maybe you Thunderbolt into the, the, the Thunderous slot. Yeah, it's Nasty Plot. That's fine, though. I would think Rockfall just KOs, but they have Reflect up, so if Rotom has, like, a ton of bulk, maybe it survives. Let's find out. Either way, this is great, because I think Rotom probably thought it was, like, super, super safe. And <laughs> it just gets one-shot by Avalog. <gasps> Uh, Avalog is really moving in this one. Nice. Alright, not bad. I I'm gonna be real, like, I don't think I've played against an Avalog in months, but when I saw this team, especially because it was built by, uh, Bars, and, you know, we've used a bunch of his teams, he's had some really, really strong team comps, I was like, I have to try this out, and he had a really good win rate with this as well, so, yeah. 
I, I think with a lot of the teams that I have featured on Road to Rank, though, they are more oriented towards best of one, right? Uh, it's like, if you see Thunderous and Avalog and you know it's going to be Swagger and Avalog, you know Thunderous is never going to max, then you can play completely differently than people if they respect the Thunderous max option, for example. Um, Sand being up here is great, because, yeah, I mean, I can just Moonblast Urshifu here. And uh, Icicle Spear into Porygon. Especially because it's uh, Water Urshifu, so we have Thunderous to deal with it as well. I really don't think there's much my opponent can do. Uh, in fact, like, you, you can't even KO... Yeah, you can't KO Avalog right now. Surging Strikes, Hyper Beam's definitely not going to do it. So, yeah. <laughs> this Avalog is so tanky. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nice. Doesn't even take 50 from that, despite the crits. They're probably going to Hyper Beam, but yeah. Like, you need a crit right now, and even if you crit, it's... It's still pretty difficult to win the game, I think. And yeah, this Avalok takes it after the special defense boosts and the uh, special attack drops to Porygon. You can see how strong Porygon is though, right? Like that's at minus two special attack. I'm at plus one special defense. I have Assault Vest and it still almost KO'd me from 50%. Like it's pretty impressive. Um, but this should just be a double KO with Sand and Icicle Spear now. Well, actually, I mean, if Icicle Spear only gets two hits, Porygon's surviving the turn, but it obviously can't attack next turn anyway. And uh, Avalok gets multiple, nicely done. Uh, actually enough to survive. Uh, but that's fine, because obviously Porygon just can't attack the subsequent turn. But honestly, even if my opponent crit there, like, I think the max guard was huge, right? Because I got a free swagger off that turn. My opponent basically got nothing off, and I got a free special defense boost. Um, so, yeah. Avalog, you know, really solid in this matchup. And the main thing was getting that Eerie Impulse onto Porygon. Like, I can't stress how good of a move Eerie Impulse is in this format. It's just so strong. So, yeah, we just double up here, and that'll be game. So I learned from my mistakes in that last one, that's for sure. Because uh, last one, the last game, like, I was really excited before because I was like, oh yeah, this is our first game with Avalog. Like, Avalog is just going to absolutely sweep here. Um, but I just didn't play it well. How would I play it any differently? I, I guess it's still worth maxing turn one. The thing is, we never wanted to KO Lyapard on turn one, and we should assume it has Focus Sash, right? So if I Hailstorm or Icicle Spear into that slot and we KO it, my opponent gets a free switch into Torkoal, and then you have Torkoal Hattering under Trick Room, which is really bad for us. Although I suppose because I had Eerie Impulse, maybe we could have gotten away with it. I'm not sure. Either way, let's look for our next game. All right, third game of the day. Um, this is just when I mean, we used this team before, uh, if I remember correctly. I think it was Hirofumi's team, if I recall, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Should we just do it again? Say, say, whatever, Thunderous Avalog? <laughs> it's not bad. I, I guess the main thing here is like, Wait, I don't outspeed one Sakata, do I? This is bulky thunderous, no. If I remember correctly, that's a jack button whimsicott. Um Yeah, it's a jack button, isn't it? I, I think So Thunderous and Urshifu is actually interesting because you can't trick onto this thing. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> because I, th I, if I remember correctly, it's eject Whimsicott, I really don't want to lead Thunderous Avalog because I can just get ejected out immediately. Whim Spectrier? I, I like Thunderous just because of Eerie Impulse into so many things. Should I just do it? Thunderous Avalog and bait out the eject? Feeny in the back. And Urshifu? Hmm. Like, the thing is, if I could find an easy setup to get Trick Room up with Bronza, I would go with that. But I just don't see how we accomplish that in this game, like, at all. There's just too too much anti-Bronza on stuff, right? Whimsicott has Taunt, potentially, and Eject Button. I think this is just Hirofumi's team. I'm pretty sure I used this in the Players' Cup 3 qualifiers, actually. But it's just, it's just been a while. Maybe it's a modified version. Because I think my opponent's, my opponent's Pokemon aren't in Japanese, they're in Chinese, and Hirofumi's team was Japanese, if I remember correctly? Ugh, either way, this is really scary, right? Because, like, Meteor Beam, there might be Will-O-Wisp from the Spectre as well. Mm. Honestly, the play I'm thinking of is switching to Feeny here. That sets up the terrain, so even if you're Will-O-Wisp, it's fine. And then we can max and just Quake here into the... Now Ego. Like, while it's nice to get a Swagger off or Eerie Impulse here, I I guess my opponent could also just Meteor Beam Avalog, though, right? That's the other part of the problem. They probably do. 
Yeah, I mean, it's not going to KO us, but then, like, they would not max on turn one, and we would max, and we don't get that much mileage out of things, so... I don't know. Maybe Spectre Max is here. I'd be very happy to see uh, a Max here, actually. So let's see what they opt for. Yeah, they are going to max. Okay. Well, I said I'd be very happy. I don't know if I'm actually very happy. <laughs> let's see. Okay, it is going to be Spectre Maxing. So ideally, like they went Meteor Beam into Thunderous, we one-shot the Nao Ego, and then we have Eerie Impulse to deal with the Spectre in the late game. I just think I have to switch into Feeny here to cover for it being uh, Willow with Spectre. And even if you go Phantasm, uh, Power of Meteor Beam into Glass, not Glass Trier, uh, Avalug, like we should survive. It's just, I don't know if that's the best trade-off for us. Getting a special defense boost on Feeny right now is actually really nice though, actually, now that I think about it. Because my opponent doesn't have amazing Feeny answers. Now Ego is actually one of their better ones. Okay, they go Max Strike. Oh, to cover for... Okay, that is really smart. But that's actually totally fine with me. Um, what the, I think that was to cover for Dynamax Thunderous, right? Yeah. There's Meteor Beam. So I, I would think it's a double up on the Thunderous slot, because they're thinking, hey, you're probably AB Thunderous, let me just KO you turn one. Um... That's actually a really, really phenomenal play to cover for AV Thunderous, but fortunately for us, we have the element of surprise. It's not AV Thunderous. Yeah. So, like, this is a great trade for us, in my opinion, if you're targeting the Feeny. Yeah. So, because I knock out the Now Ego, I get a special defense boost, and I still have Thunderous safely in the back. You get a beast boost, but that doesn't really matter because I just KO you. Now I can bring in Thunderous and either Aerial Pulse Spectre or just Swagger into Avalog. Both are viable options. Uh, one thing to note is that Swagger obviously can miss, so, like, that's the main thing I'm a little bit nervous about. Uh, throughout the course of this game, but getting a special defense boost on this Avalog is so, so nice. If you look into my opponent's team, most of their Pokemon are actually pretty weak uh, to, or, or like, uh, more specially oriented, right? I guess the one thing here is, like, they could go into um, Mamoswine. Uh, that's a little bit scary, but I think I'll still go into Thunderous here. Uh, it is Mamo. I was thinking of bringing Urshifu out to counter it, but then what's, what's like, the proper line of action? I'm not 100% sure. Um, I lean here towards just swaggering into Avalog, and then going for the Hailstorm onto Spectrier. I just, I don't know if that's enough to KO. I feel like, I feel like I'll survive with just a little bit. Ugh. Oh, uh, you know what? This isn't great. Uh, like the play I made, I don't know if I feel great about, because I could miss first of all. I guess I should have brought Urshifu out, because I think my opponent had to bring out Mamoswine to deal with Thunderous. So if I brought out Urshifu, what could I have done? Just Sucker Punch? Because I'd have to cover for them max striking and doubling up onto Urshifu, right? So at best I could like, oh, what a good play on their end. I mean, I still get a Swagger off actually, so it's not that bad, I think, but that was really, really smart. If I had Steel Spiked Mammal, I don't think we survived this, right? There's no way. This reminds me of World's Finals 2013. Uh, if I Steel Spiked into Mammal, that felt like a win. But although they're going to be Sashed. Um, oh, that was very, very well done. However, this is actually still maybe not that bad because it's pretty easy for me to protect Urshifu and Max Steel Spike into Mammal the next turn, right? Um, that brings it down to Sash, and then both of my opponent's Pokemon are in KO Rage from Sucker Punch. So I'm going to protect and Steel Spike here. It really comes out of what my opponent's last one is. When's it called Cinderace Moltres? Two of the three Avalok just demolishes. Cinderace is the main problem here. So it's always kind of tough to bring regular Cinderace in the late game because, like, it's such a strong max option. But against our team, like, you know, we have Avalok, we have Bronze Eye. I think it would make perfect sense for that to be my opponent's last one. I think if I just Steel Spiked into Mammal last turn, like, this would... It, it wouldn't be a complete wrap, I guess. Because the other question is, I don't know how much plus two Hailstorm does into the Spectre Um, But that was a really, really good max card on their end. So well done. I would max strike, I would double up onto Mammal here. Or sorry, onto Urshifu, yeah. So I think I had to protect there. Um, just, yeah, it's just a problem because Mammal is definitely going to be Sash. Although I will get a defense boost, so then I don't even know if your Mammal Swine KOs me. And they're going to Earthquake. Okay, that's great. That's great, that's great. Because they're going to drop their own, that means a lot of damage onto themselves. Now it's definitely in Sucker Punch KO range, although I think it already was beforehand. Ah, so this next turn is very, very interesting, right? Do you switch out Spectrier? Because Sucker Punch onto that is so obvious. So what I could do 
is Sucker Punch, Mammal Swine, and Rock Slide. If I'm expecting Spectre to switch out here. I think it's probably correct to still play it safe here. Um, and just go Sucker Punch. Because your EQ is not going to KO us with the defense boost right now anyway. Yeah, so I, I'm down to Sucker Punch. And I, I think I do want to Rock Slide here. It's a little bit risky because I can miss the Mammal. But I have to... Like, I think... Um, Spectre switching out here is actually a really big possibility, and Rock Slide potentially can pick up a double KO on the switch. Because uh, they have no rock resist in the back. So yeah, uh, that's what I'm going to go for here. Alright, not a bad spot to be in. Uh, Could have been a little bit better. The max guard on Spectre was a very, very good play by my opponent, so kudos to them there. Nice, and they just attack with Spectre. Okay, so this should just be a double KO. This is where it's uh, like scary though, because I clicked Rock Slide. Um, but Mamo EQ is not going to finish us off here for sure. Yeah. So it basically comes down to what the last one is. If it's Moltres, we win. If it's Cinderace, it's really dicey. And Rock's like fortunately connects. Okay, well done, Avalog. Well done. Regardless of how this game ends up being, uh, Avalog was really impressive, right? It single-handedly won us the second game. It was ca It's carrying us in this third one. And in the first game, like, it really could have just won the entire matchup for us if I execute a little bit better. Okay, so it is Cinderace. Cinderace, Cinderace, Cinderace. I have a defense boost. I can freely sucker punch onto this right now. I think I have. Ooh, I could close combat. Because close combat into sucker punch should be a KO. Can Cinderace knock out Urshifu? I think close combat high horsepower here works. Because Cinderace, if you knock out Urshifu, you'd have to basically go for Iron Head to steel spike and then i think high horsepower will ko so i think yeah i want to close combat here uh because is you know might change into fighting type uh and if it does then sucker punch into another sucker punch won't ko so close combat yeah they, yep exactly they go for high jump kick perfect i i guess yeah i mean i don't know if urshifu can oh i thought they were gonna target avalug there i don't think this ko's right Ah, that was the one thing I didn't consider. Them targeting Urshifu. If I Sucker Punch there, I actually would have won. But I thought um, Cinderace high jump kicking into Avalok here felt really likely. I, I think we feign even with the defense boost. I mean, they're not life orbed at least. So this will be close. But I think they get the KO. All right, here's Pyro Ball. Ah, oh, I, I could have Icicle Spear there as well. But I was worried about them changing into Steel Typing. Oh, never mind. Avalok is so good. <laughs> this Pokemon is nuts! What? Oh my gosh. Wow. Alright, shoutouts to Avalug. Uh, it was actually the MVP of all three games. Yeah, even though in the first game I didn't like get maximum usage out of it. Uh, it was it was so good here. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm, I'm like genuinely really impressed by it. So, yeah. <laughs> what a fun team we have here. Last match of the day. What do we got here? Speaking of 2013, that's actually a very 2013-esque team, like Cresselia, Landris, Thunderous. I mean, I really just want to go with Avalog again. This thing is just so fun. I don't think it's a bad choice, honestly. Incineroar is kind of annoying. Um, but, like, I'm down for Thunderous, Avalog. I think Bronzong needs to come out here for Iron Defense for the stack attacker. And then it's between Feeny and Urshifu. Urshifu is more valuable into Cresselia and Stack Attacka, but I think it's kind of hard to actually enable it, so I'm going to go with Feeny instead. Yeah, let's do this. See how it plays out. Uh, the goal here being to just get Avalug boosted up. Uh, now, my opponent is double Intimidate, so that makes things a little bit scarier, but I mean, the, the upside of Avalug is that it hits almost everything on my opponent's team for super effective, right? Four of the six in Thunderous, Lando, Insin, and Stack Attacka. Um, Bronzong's very good for Iron Defense setup into Stack Attacka specifically. Feeny is one of my main concerns, but that's why uh, this Thunderous has Eerie Impulse as well. However, that's one thing to watch out for, right? If we lose Thunderous too early on, Feeny in the late game might be a problem for us. Cinderace didn't feel amazing here, so yeah, I don't regret not bringing it out in this one. And... Um, yeah. I mean, Urshifu, like, eh. They, come, they came really close to time there, by the way. So if we see Instant Crest lead, they might have timed out. 
And if it's instant crest, I mean, man, and, and thunderous land on the back, like, uh, Avalok just should do really well. Although they're still double intimidated to play around, right? So it's not like it's just going to win the game outright. Um, but let's see. That's Landorus and Insin. Okay, so dual intimidate. Uh, I mean, not amazing for Avalog. Wow, that's like a really risky lead. Unless you're 100% sure it's going to be Swagger Thunderous. Because imagine if I were Defiant Thunderous here. <laughs> like, <laughs> it would just be in amazing shape. Um, oh, I totally forgot about Own Temple actually ignoring Intimidate as well. Wait, that's just so good for us then, right? Like, what do you even do if you're my opponent? Fake out Thunderous, Rockfall at turn one? I mean, that's really risky, right? You're, you're only ice switching right now. Okay, uh, I think I want to switch Thunderous out into Feeny. Or actually, maybe into Bronzong instead. And I'm down to just Icicle Speed. Ah! The risk of not maxing here is actually bad. If the There's no way they're going to max Rockfall Avalug, right? I mean, if they do, that is a phenomenal play on their end. But I want to just switch into Feeny and Icicle Spear here. The thing is that Feeny gives us an out, right? It's just like that first game where it's like, even if Avalok feigns, Feeny can actually clean up in the late game as well. Like, it, it's just as much of a sweeper as Avalog is. So let's see if they max. I'd, I'd be really surprised to see a Landorus max. Like, U-turn here makes the most sense, but maybe they go, like, fake out Rockfall onto Thunderous. Wow, they max. I mean, if I'm eating a Rockfall into Avalog and we get one shot, that's really bad. So I guess the safer play here was the Hailstorm. I just, like, thought... Oh, wow. Now that, I didn't think about, but I think it was really smart. I love that play on their end. I I love that play. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Oh my gosh. That was so <laughs> smart. <laughs> Goodbye, Avalug. The thing is, maxing there wouldn't have given me that much mileage. Um, I didn't think about instant maxing at all. Uh, man, how do I even come back? Is that banded? That rock slide did so much damage. Oh, this is really bad. Um, should we do a fun throwback to Worlds 2013? Swagger my opponent's Landers right now? <laughs> I might have to. I, that was such a good play turn one. I And I should have baited it out. Like, I, I guess Avalug was facing two things I could have hit it for super effective. So I actually could have pulled a double switch in that position. And Feeny would have been pretty good as a double switch. So I think if I were to replay that turn, um, even without knowing my opponent's play, I shouldn't have risked Avalug because Avalug's so good in the matchup. It's just like that first game, so... I think in this one, it's going to be a little bit tougher to come back from, though, unfortunately for us. Um... I am going to call mine here. I The play might actually be to just Swagger Landorus right now. <laughs> I, I think I have to go for it. Oh my gosh. Here we are, all these years later. Eight years later, I'll Swagger Thunderous onto Landorus. It does connect, so that's a good start. <laughs> oh, we're faster than Lando. Wait, that's actually a really critical piece of information. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, well, if Lando hits itself in confusion, we're actually just instantly back in this game. Let's see, one third chance. Why couldn't my landers do that at Worlds? That's all I just wanted. That's all I wanted. <laughs> well, I can't complain. Uh, Swagger was also nerfed a lot since 2013, right? Uh, your odds of hitting the Swagger are, are slimmer now. You also have to attack through confusion. Um, oh, and they max strike. Well done. Well done. Yeah, this is... Just such a good instant max turn one. I just like did not ever think that was a possibility. I guess I could have like I could have maxed Avalog and at least hailstormed or quaked for a KO, but I approached this matchup completely incorrectly from turn one. Um, I needed to play defensively because uh, maxing Incineroar is a really big risk normally, right? Um, because if you don't like making a max like that is basically saying I'm going all in on this play. If it doesn't work out, like we're they're in really bad shape. Um, so. Because Avalog was out against two major threats, I kind of got baited into thinking, oh, Instant's just going to fake out, Landers has to fear the Avalog, so you know, they're going to switch out here. Um, so this is why like getting creative with your Dynamaxes can be really smart. We were able to get a lot of creative Dynamaxes in you know some of the previous episodes, and this was just like really good execution by my opponent. 
Because I think in terms of Pokemon, I'd actually still bring the same Pokemon. You don't want to lead Cinderace into this. You don't want to lead Urshifu into this. Um, maybe Feeny lead instead. Could have been better. Um, okay, there's actually still a slight chance we can win this. If Landers hits itself in confusion, we Geyser, we change the weather, and then your Flare doesn't KO the Bronzong, and I get an Iron Defense off. Bronzon and Feeny could actually theoretically pull off a comeback. Uh, it was a really good max strike on their end last turn as well. Like, they, they've played this game basically perfectly to a T. Uh, it was worth an effort. Wow, that was like a perfect game by the way. I got smacked. Um, but I, I, I don't even, I, like, I don't feel bad. My opponent just found a really, really, really smart play. Uh, and this actually could have gone completely differently if the Lando just hit itself in confusion on turn two. Um, oh wow, we even survived the flare there. You can see how bulky Bronzong is, right? Um, this is a game in which if we played it again, like I, yeah, I just didn't respect the Incineroar option or didn't, didn't consider it uh, at all, basically. And that was just... Great, a great find by my opponent. I mean, they they basically played a perfect game, right? I don't think they took damage. <laughs> um, and so, normally you don't want to gamble the game on turn one, and I just didn't even think about the possibility of... I, I'm pretty sure that's banded Lando, too. Like, so the Roxo was doing so much damage. So, if I were to play this differently, let's say we were playing a best of three, how would I approach it? I'd probably lead Feeny, and... Um, I mean, honestly, Thunder Savalog isn't even bad. We just have to switch out. But the Insane Lando lead was really good on their end. I, that has to be banned in Lando, right? Like, that Rock Slide did, like, 40% to my Feeny before Swagger. So, yeah. Um, they played this game perfectly. So, if I, if I turn one had switched out, um, I think I had to double switch turn one, basically, right? Uh, Thunderous into Bronzong, and then, uh, Avalog into Feeny. If we had done that turn one, I think that turn alone just gives us so much mileage. Because then you can't really do that much damage in a Feeny turn two. As you saw, we actually survived the Max Flare in the sun as well against the Incineroar. So then turn two, what I would do is probably just calm mine with the Feeny and try to trick room with Bronzong. Um, you can only pick up one KO. The main thing is that we need to stall out their Dynamax, right? But maxing Incin to deal with Avalog was really clever. And so, I mean, like, game one was really close as well because I kind of played loosely with Avalog. Both of these times, like, I just, like... Didn't expect Avalok to go down, because I thought Thunderous and Avalok would be a strong lead, but uh, I led it every game, right? And that wasn't necessarily the best option in all of the games. So one thing to consider if you're using this team is potentially using Avalok in the late game rather than the early game, or baiting it, bringing it out, getting your opponent to target into it, switch out into something defensive like Bronzong, stall out your opponent's Dynamax, and then go from there. Because uh, I wasn't Dynamaxing out. I, I don't think Dynamaxing Avalok on turn one would have saved me very much here, though, because, like, Bandered Rock Slide into Flare Blitz is going to be a 2 KO anyway. Maybe I knock out the Landers in return, but then you still Flare Blitz. Although, then I guess the Sun isn't up. Eh. Yeah, it's still still questionable, though. But it would have given me a better shot, right? I didn't even get damage off of that game. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this, that, that was unfortunately uh, just not the best execution on my own. But honestly, like, really, really good play by my opponent as well. Because I don't know how many players would actually just double up into Avalok on turn one like that. And if they had played, you know, like, you know, just gone fake out onto Incineroar and played loosely with Landris, that could have been completely different solely off turn one. Uh, so really good job by my opponent to find that play. Anyway, that is going to be it for this episode, so thanks so much as always for watching. If you enjoyed, please share your support by leaving a like, and yeah, I'll see you all next time. Peace.